Yeah, I don't need that at all, Charlie. That's fine. Go ahead. Be a good dog. Thank you. Good girl. Hey. <laughs> it's been a while. So surprise, surprise, I got busy with school this summer, but that doesn't mean that me and Charlie haven't been going out and doing some things together on my little vacation. If you have seen some of my other videos, you might know that I like to take Charlie with me to bars, birthdays, basically wherever I'm allowed to. So while going over what me and Shelly have been doing this summer, I thought I would talk a little bit about why I do it, but also how I do it, what training goes into it, and all of that. And this is, by the way, not a free flight training video. This is more just how to train your bird to be outside so that you can hang out more. So yeah, let's talk about desensitization. For a bird to go outside for the first time can be a lot to them and that is why it is so important to train it and to take it very slow and for you to be very patient. Desensitizing a bird to being outside basically means that they are able to go outside without spooking or being uncomfortable or in any way stressed. How to start desensitization training can vary a bit from bird to bird, depending on how much experience they have or how much training they've done in general. If you just got a bird and it isn't a baby or still isn't comfortable with you yet, I would suggest to not take it outside immediately until you guys have bonded a little bit and at least done some maybe carrier training or target training or whatnot to just get a common language and understand each other a little bit and not just throw it outside immediately. Now, baby birds are a bit more tolerant when it comes to new settings and such. I took Charlie outside from a very young age and I would say she got all the benefits from that. She weren't as scared the first time so I took her out and she got used to it very quickly. That's the benefit with young birds. Older birds wait a little, you know, do the basics, of course also with your baby birds. So let's say you've gotten all the basics down, how do you get started? And there are two ways to take your bird outside mainly, and that is the carrier or the harness. The easiest and safest way to get your bird outside is in a carrier. The other option is a harness, but it can be a bit scary if your bird should spook in a harness, both for you and the bird. So I would just say stick with the carrier in the beginning. The harness is an amazing tool for taking a bird outside. It's what we use, but it just takes a little bit more time for the bird to be comfortable with the harness. It's a whole other training process to get your bird to take the harness on and so on. So while getting started and just taking them outside periodically, I would go with the carrier. If you want to take your bird outside in a harness or have done the training so much now that you want to move on to a harness, there are a lot of different videos talking about how to harness train a parrot. I can make one if you want me to, but there are already videos on that. But yeah, once you're outside, it's just a matter of treating a bird whenever your bird displays calm or good behavior that you want them to repeat. So let's say a car drives by and they make a little, you know, notice but they don't spook treat them very good job if the wind blows really hard but they stay on your finger very calmly treat them and then slowly they'll start to associate all of these different new things with something very positive so start out small with maybe just five to ten minutes and then slowly increase that amount and if your bird is comfortable enough to take treats just treat them whenever they display some behavior that you want repeated. So any calm behavior towards all of these unfamiliar things. And then I am positive that your bird will start to associate the outside and the unfamiliar with something very good. And so you might be thinking, why desensitize a bird to be outside if I don't plan on free flying it anyway? And I'm not only here to tell you, but also to show you. It is extremely practical, maybe more than you think, to have a bird that quickly adapts to new settings and situations, which is basically what this training teaches them. It just gets very easy to transport them around whenever you might need to, and that could be if they need to be taken care of at a friend's house. It's easier for them to adjust without being extremely stressed about a new house and setting and sounds and all that. It is extremely practical when you need to go to the vet and they need to get in their carrier out in the car and also a little bit outside whenever you go back and forth. 
I commute with Charlie. Taking the train has never been easier because Charlie just gets in her carrier, sits there quietly and doesn't care about all the sounds and noises and people talking and whatnot. It's super practical in your everyday life and you might not know it. <laughs> Besides it being practical, it just allows you to spend more time with your bird in general, depending on how your days are scheduled, of course, but I would dare say that most people have to leave for some event at some point. And if you're allowed, why not bring them with you? So to exemplify, here is what me and Charlie have been doing this summer. In every situation, no matter what, if Charlie shows signs of uncomfortableness or is being stressed or I know something isn't healthy for her, I always remove her from the situation, but she doesn't. That's the neat part. So my vacation actually started out without Charlie. I went to Austria for a week with my dad and my siblings, and I tried to call the hotel and ask, but Charlie was not allowed in there. And if this was my holiday, I would of course just have kept searching for a hotel that will allow birds so that I could bring her. But you know, my dad was paying, he invited us, he had already picked a hotel. I did not want to bother. So Charlie went to vacation at my mom's house for a week where she basically has my old room with a tree stand where she can just roam around. So fast forward a week, we get home and the day after we are invited to a graduation party and I ask if I can bring Charlie. I can. So therefore I take her in her harness, I bring her carrier and we just hang out. So how does Charlie react during these events? And normally I can legit just talk, eat, do activities, whatever. Charlie would just sit nice and quietly and follow along. She even took a little nap despite the music and other noises. And this is typically how she is at events. Of course, people will come up and ask if they can hold her. They can, she loves going on people's hands because she knows she'll get treats. Uh, she doesn't like being pet though in public or getting scritches. I can't do that when she's in her harness. She's not very comfortable with that, but I just tell people and then they're fine with it because they're holding a parrot anyway. So, Then a couple of days later, my dad asked if we want to eat at our local restaurant slash pub, whatever. It's a nice place. And Chelly is allowed in there. She's been there a couple of times and they of course remember her. So we're allowed in there and then normally just find a place to sit outside or inside. Charlie can be on my shoulder in her harness or on the ground in her carrier. And she's very comfortable with that as well. I like to normally sit where there aren't many people because I don't like being stared at while I eat. And yes, you will get a lot of attention going out with your parrot. And while it can be fun in the start, you yourself get desensitized to people being like, look what's on her shoulder. Is that a parrot? And then there are the moms that whisper really loudly, if you ask nicely, maybe you can hold it while doing this. But it's a win-win because whenever people come up and ask if they can hold Charlie, I say yes, and she gets some training out of that as well. And I mean, if Charlie can tolerate screaming kids, Charlie can tolerate anyone. The next event we went to was with my boyfriend and some of his friends at his university where we basically got some beer and I got a Kokio. And if you don't know what Kokio is, you're totally missing out. But yeah, she hung out, said hello to a lot of different people. I brought her carrier so that she could always go in and chill if she didn't want the attention or if she wanted some water or whatever. But other than that, she just chilled. And by the way, I did not give her alcohol. This was just for fun. Don't give your birds alcohol, it's unhealthy. We did also go to the zoo a couple of weeks after, but my vacation brain, for some reason, did not take any videotape of us being there. So please take my word for it. An important thing I want to add though, wherever I take Charlie, I always ask for permission to take her. Don't sneak your birds into wherever you want to go always ask for permission. If I'm unsure or can't find any employees, I'll usually look for the no dog sign because that usually just applies to don't bring any animals in here. And also maybe take her in her carrier if I'm unsure and then ask. So just, just be aware, don't be a bother to people and take your parrot wherever. Um, I also don't bring her to stores or restaurants just because even though Charlie is of course nice and healthy, a lot of stores and restaurants could get into trouble if there's animals near the food products. 
So if I'm at a restaurant, it's usually outside as it was Charlie. Also remember to bring tissues because your bird might poop or animal might poop while inside. So I usually clean that up. If we're outside, I don't clean up like in the zoo, for example, because birds poo there all the time. So don't care. I think that was me and Charlie's whole vacation. Of course, the weather has been terrible and I had a redo exam, so there wasn't much time there. But one other thing we did get to do was this. Awesome, right? Now this is free flight, by the way. Don't nilly dilly take your bird outside without harness or anything. Take safety precautions always, also with this training. But yeah, Charlie had her first free flight and I was terrified. <laughs> but ignoring the free flight part, I hope you can see why I believe desensitization training is so rewarding. But remember, this is after two years of training and getting Charlie used to not only being outside, but me taking her out of the house very often to different settings. And I will also have Charlie in a harness when doing these things, even though I'm free flight training, because my free flight goal is not to do these things without a harness. Because when you're out in town and such, you know, zoos and all that, a lot more unpredictable elements are added to the mix. So you won't see me train this with my free flight training because it's just unsafe to take her these places without a harness. My plan is to make individual videos covering the topics I talked about in this video up here. And basically it's because I think the bird community is at a place where everything is dangerous and be wary of this and be wary of that. But I really want to show people that you can still have a companionship with your parrot where you take them outside with you and they get to experience what it's like to be outside, but without the free flight training aspect of it. It's totally fine if you want to free flight, totally fine if you don't. I can see both aspects, but taking a bird outside without them being free flight trained is still super rewarding, both for you, but also just for the parrot in general. So that's sort of where I wanted to land with this video. I hope I covered it well enough. If you have any questions, please ask down there. But until then...